Hello everybody, this is a cooking show from Pauline's Kitchen and uh, when you go through your old recipes you come up with some beautiful gems and this one preserved in my plastic sleeve is one of ginger marmalade and it's from Mrs A Webster of Morfittville, South Australia and I just thought it was time we had some homemade marmalade so we're having ginger marmalade with crushed pineapple and grapefruit today. We're slicing the grapefruit as thinly as we can without cutting the fingers so that the peel is fairly fine and um, that's a thin piece of grapefruit. If you can get it thinner than I can, go for it. So the grapefruit's put into a fairly decent sized saucepan because there's a few more ingredients to go in. It's a good idea to start with a sharp knife. I haven't been to Master Chef yet, that's why it's not looking so wonderful. But it will cook down. There's two large grapefruit in this recipe and uh, when you look in the pot you can see there's quite a bit of grapefruit in two large grapefruit. I'm just going to spread that out a little bit so that it's evenly in the pot and now I'm going to put it on the heat. Uh, the grapefruit's in the pot and now I'm going to add one and a half litres of water all pre-measured as they do in good cooking classes and I'll turn the element on And then I'm going to bring this to the boil, just bring it to the boil. I've just measured out 60 grams of crystallised ginger. I bought it in fairly big pieces, so I'm pulsing it down so that it spreads through the jam. smells beautiful. This, this is just getting things ready for when the grapefruit and water come to the boil. So we're preparing ahead. The other preparation is the pineapple because we're having some pineapple with this marmalade too. Just a can of, um, a small can of pineapple this one's 425 grams, I think they're smaller than that these days. And retain the juice. And I'm going to put all of it in the food processor just to make it a bit smaller without pulping it. This is the broken up pineapple with the juice. It's coming coming to the boil now. You can see the boiling coming through there and the amount of steam coming off. So I'll just let it come up a little bit more and because I'm cooking on electricity I'm going to turn the heat down now to a moderate heat and then let it simmer for 20 minutes with the lid on. I have six cups of sugar ready here, white sugar, and I'm going to heat it in the oven, ready to put it in the jam. The sugar needs to be warmed right through so that it doesn't take any heat 
out of the first mixture that we've got there. I've got it on just a moderate oven. And the sugar will stay there for about seven, eight minutes or until it's warmed right through. This is the simmering and the colour's changed a little bit and the pith has gone orange. I test the temperature of the sugar and you must remember to be very careful because when sugar gets hot it gets sticky and it could burn you. So I'm going to take a little bit out with the spoon out of the middle put it in there it's not warm yet sugar out of the oven carefully and now I'm going to put it in with the grapefruit that's been simmering just stirring that in mix it a little bit now I'm going to put the pineapple in with the juice. And now the ginger. And I'll spread that out a little bit because it's gone, it's clumped together. Mixing it well. Now I'm going to bring the heat up a little bit because everything got a little bit cold then. And I'm going to bring this mixture to the boil. And I will boil, simmer it uncovered for 50 to 60 minutes. It's coming to the boil now. Not quite boiling all over the pan and can, you can see that the light orange is now turning a little more caramel so I'll turn that down to a simmer which just means there's a few bubbles coming through the mixture and I'll leave it there for 60 minutes this ginger pineapple marmalade is very Queensland the grapefruit is from Mundubra just north of here the sugar is definitely Queensland sugar. The ginger comes from the town next door, Yandina Ginger Factory. And the pineapple, well, that comes from Coles. The ginger and pineapple marmalade is boiling on the stove, simmering away for an hour. But I'm not one to waste a minute of the day God's given me. So I'll get the ironing done. And if you've got little jobs to do while you're waiting for the marmalade to cook, you've got a chance to get out and do with them. In my case, it's uh, finished painting the fence. Which is uh, something I wanted to do for a while. It's looking pretty good. <coughs> That'll be just about right now. Doesn't look too bad. I've half filled these containers with warm water from the tap, but they need to be hotter, so I'm just putting boiling water in with, so that I've got really hot jars and they won't crack when the jam goes in, because that's pretty hot too. I've been simmering for 90 minutes 
and I'm just going to do a setting test. Just a little scoop of the liquid. Now I'm going to bring it over by the window to cool it down a bit. I'll leave it there for a little while for it to cool and the setting test will be when it sticks to the saucer or when I tip it, it will crease a little bit. It's very runny. So, not ready yet? No, that's not ready, that's too runny. The colour is good. If you cook it for too long, you'll tip it into the jars and it will actually be hard. So we don't want to cook it too much longer. We'll leave this to cool. Yeah. That's the crystallised pith and skin and it is looking lovely. A nice lump of butter on hot toast with that on top. I'm taking the pot off the stove and I have a wooden um, board to put it on the colour mm. is very yummy. I've emptied the hot water out of the jars. They're not too hot to touch but they're warm. As I get a jug full, I'm looking in the pot to make sure I get enough solid in each jar. I'm just going to wipe these jars while they're hot because I've spilt down the side. I can feel the jam setting on the side of the glass already. These um, jam jars that have the seal inside of them, you can use them again and they'll work because the jam's hot, put the lid, clean lid on tight while the jam's hot and it will seal just like it did when you bought the first original jam jar. So that's that one. Now we're going to put covers on the drinking glasses. I'm doing jam covers. It's a special kind of cellophane. I've put a little bit of water in this bread and butter plate. I'll drop a single jam cover in there and take control of it because it wants to roll up all the time and lay it across the top of the, the jar, the drinking glass. the sides down and put a rubber band on it to hold it there. In the packet with the jam covers come these little labels and on this one I've written Queensland Marmalade 2012. There's a little bit of gum on the back so I just wet that and pop it on the glass and this one on the glass just in case the lid gets lost you don't want it on the lid and then 
we'll leave it out to cool tonight and tomorrow we'll put them in the pantry.